All right, so to get started in Chapter 6, Section 2, we're going to be talking about volumes. And specifically, we're going to be talking about volumes of rotations. So in this picture, the idea is, what would the three-dimensional solid look like if I were to take the bolded blue part of that curve and rotate it in three-dimensional space around the x-axis? So then what would that look like? So let's imagine, so if I did that, it's going to look something like this. And I'm going to end up with a solid that looks kind of like this, right? So it's going to be kind of like a vase or a pot that you would put like a tree in in your front yard or something, you know, on your driveway kind of thing, but it's tipped over. Or maybe even some kind of cup or something, right? So our goal is going to be, well, how can we find the volume of something like this? All right. So let's start with an approximating rectangle. So if I started with an approximating rectangle of width delta x, the idea is we're creating a solid by rotating that around. So if I were to do that, I would create, well, I'm terrible at drawing, but a disk, right? So imagine a very thin slice. So this is a disk, and its thickness in this direction is going to be delta x. So then what would be the radius of this disk? Well, that radius of the disk comes from our approximating rectangle. So thinking back to our review, what's the distance from the x-axis to this point on the curve? Well, that perpendicular distance is going to be f of x, or the height of the graph. It's our y-coordinate. So if that's the case, if our radius is f of x, then what would be the volume of that very tiny cylinder? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared So a is pi r squared. So in this case, that's going to be pi f of x quantity squared, right? And then to find the volume of a cylinder, it's always the area of the base, no matter what the base is, whether it's a circle, a square, a rectangle, or any other geometric figure you can think of, multiplied by its height. Well, the height of this is our differential dx or delta x. So our change in volume is going to be pi f of x squared times delta x. And that would give us our little slice of that pot. So now imagine if we wanted to find the volume, we would just add up all of these slices. So this is exactly like what they do with like an MRI type image. They cut it up into a whole bunch of really thin pieces when they take that image and then they glue them all together to create a three-dimensional picture. Well, we're going to find the volume by an analogous method. So we're going to slice this three-dimensional thing into a whole bunch of really thin pieces, find the volume of all those pieces, and then add them back together to find the total volume. So then our total volume would be the sum as i goes from 1 to n of pi f of x squared dx. And as always, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, the exact volume would give us the integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. So in essence, this is going to be one of our survival skills in calculus or physics or engineering as we go on. Our big strategy is we're going to take things and kind of 
cut them up into tiny little pieces that we can manage, do the math on the tiny little pieces, and then use limits to turn those sums into integrals that we can calculate. So we'll be able to find the volumes of all sorts of crazy objects by adding up a whole bunch of really thin delta x thick slices. So that's plan A. So let's go ahead and try to execute plan A in example one. So find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the area under the curve y equals x from 0 to 3 around the x-axis. Describe the solid. All right, so let's draw a by hand sketch. There's x, here's y, 1, 2, 3. And we're graphing the curve, 1, 2, 3, y equals x. OK. So now, if I were to rotate that line, y equals x, around the x-axis, well, what's that going to look like? I'm just going to come down here. And if we spin that around, it's going to look like this. So what are we going to get? A cone, right? So that's a cone. In fact, what would the radius of our cone be from that point to the x-axis? Well, it's going to be three units. And what would the height of our cone be? Also three, three units, right? Does anybody remember what the volume formula for a cone is from geometry? We got one-third pi r squared h. So notice this is similar to the previous problem. So a cone is very general when we're talking geometry. It's the area of the base times the height divided by 3. So this happens to be a circular base. So what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared times the h, and then you take a third of it. If it was a square base, it would be 1 third s squared h, because the area of a square is s times s. If it were some other geometric figure, it would be the area of the base times the height divided by 3. It doesn't matter. So that's what's kind of cool about that formula, is that it works regardless of the two-dimensional figure of the base. So we know what this is supposed to be, so let's double check our answer. 1 third pi, and then 3 squared times 3, so we should get 9 pi when we do this. But let's do our integral, right? So our formula for the volume using an integral is the integral from 0 to 3 of pi times our radius. Well, our radius is our function, which is y equals x. So x squared dx. So we take our antiderivative of x squared as x cubed over 3. And then we evaluate it from 0 to 3. And we get pi times 3 cubed divided by 3, which is 27 divided by 3, which gives us 9 pi. And we get the same answer using calculus as we did using geometry that we learned a long time ago. So in fact, all of the volume formulas from um, geometry can be derived fairly easily using calculus and a nice integral. We'll actually come up with a few awesome new ones for frustrums of cones and other such things. All right, so to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region y equals x squared, y equals 9, and x around the y-axis, first thing we need to do is graph. So let's graph this thing. So we go y equals and we're going to put in x squared. And we have y equals 9. And graph. 
get something that looks like this. My window is not quite right, so I'm going to go zoom six for my standard window. So we want to find the solid when we rotate this around. So let's see, we've got our y equals x squared, that's this piece. And we have our y equals 9, that's this piece. Right here. And then we have our x equals to 0. And that's going to be this piece right here. And we're supposed to rotate this around the y-axis. So our approximating rectangle is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. So then now we have y equals 9, we have y equals 0, and we're going to find our volume is the integral from 0 to 9, and then we need our function of y. So we have y equals x squared, but what we're really going to need to do is solve that for x, and that gives us x is equal to the square root of y. So we're going to have the square root of y squared pi times our radius squared dy. So then we get the integral from 0 to 9, pull our pi out, square root of y squared is just y dy, and we get pi, and then our antiderivative is y squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 9, and we get 81 over 2 pi minus 0. And that's going to be the volume of our region. So to resolve this u try, we want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region y equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2 around the x-axis. Well, this region, putting it into our calculator, get rid of our y equals 9, we're going to have our parabola, once again, y equals x squared, we have y equals 0 and y equals 2. So our x equals 2 is going to be right here, like this, and so we're looking for the volume of that region right there. So it looks like our volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of pi times x squared squared dx. So pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the fourth dx gives us pi x to the fifth over 5 and we evaluate that from 0 to 2. 2 to the 5th power is 32, so 32 pi over 5 minus 0. So we get that the volume of our rotation is 32 pi over 5. So the next method we want to talk about is the washer method. And it's used when we want to find the region between two curves being rotated about an axis. So we've got our two curves here. So we've got our, I'll make this one red, and we have blue. So now if we imagine we have a circle, and then our inner circle is going to hollow that thing out, and then we're going to have a disk. So this is like our delta x. 
and we're going to have our outer radius, which is the distance from the x-axis to the red curve. So that's our outer radius. And then we're going to have our inner radius, which is from the center <coughs> to here, or the distance from the blue curve. So that's our inner radius and our outer radius that goes here. And we imagine rotating that around, we're going to get our volume given by pi f sub x squared minus pi g of x squared dx, where this is our outer radius and this is going to be our inner radius when we make our solid. So let's use that to calculate the volume in example number three. So the region closed by the curves y equals x and y equals x squared is rotated around the x-axis. Find the volume of the solid. So we've got our y equals x and our y equals x squared. And let's zoom in a bit. And we have this nice picture. And we want to rotate this region right here. around the x-axis. So that makes our line, this is going to be our outer radius, and this is going to be our inner radius. And setting them equal to each other, x squared equals x, we minus x, we minus x. x squared minus x gives us x times x minus 1. So our two solutions are x equals 0 or x equals 1. And that gives us our limits of integration. So v is equal, I'm just going to put the pi out in front of the integral from 0 to 1 of our outer radius, so that's x squared, or x quantity squared, minus our inner radius, which is x squared squared dx. And that gives us simplifying up a bit, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x to the fourth dx. And our antiderivative is then pi times x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5. And we can put that into our calculator under our y equals to simplify the numeric calculation. So we go x cubed alpha y equals to get our fraction over 3 minus x to the fifth alpha y equals to get our fraction over 5. I got that as y1 so then I go alpha trace y1 of 1 minus alpha trace y1 of 0. And that gives us 2 over 15, so we get 2 over 15 pi. So now we want to find the region enclosed by the curves y equals x and x squared, but this time we're going to rotate it around the line y equals 2, 2. So we have our curve y equals x, y equals x squared, and then we'll put in y equals 2. Let's go ahead and graph this. So let's change our window up a little bit more. So let's go window, let's make our x min 0, and let's make our y min 0. So we're using that same region that we did in the previous example, but this time instead of rotating it around the x-axis, we're going to rotate it 
around the line y equals to 2. So we have y equals 2 is right here. y equals x is right here. And y equals x squared is right here. So the distances that we're trying to find, we need our outer radius, which is going to be this distance. So our outer radius is going to be 2 minus x squared. And our inner radius is going to be the distance from the orange to the red. So that's our inner radius is still going to be 2 take away x. So now we need to find our intersection points, which is still 0, 1. I'm going to pull the pi out. So pi, the integral from 0 to 1, and it's going to be our outer radius squared. So 2 minus x squared squared minus 2 minus x squared dx. So now we are going to expand out both of these, so we get 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth minus 4 minus 4x plus x squared dx. And we collect up our like terms. So we have um, x to the fourth, and then we have a negative 4x squared minus a positive x squared, so that's going to be minus 5x squared. And then our 4's, positive 4 minus 4, they reduce out and we're left with we have just our minus a minus 4x, so it becomes a positive 4x dx. So now we get our antiderivative, which is x to the fifth over 5 minus 5x cubed over 3 plus 2x squared. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So I'll put that in. We're going to have our x to the fifth over 5. minus 5x to the third over 3 plus 2x squared and we have y of 1 minus y of 0 and we get 8 over 15 we get 8 over 15 pi For example 6, we want to find the volume of a pyramid whose base is a square with side length L and whose height is H. So help me get this set up. I'm going to draw our square like this. Here's its apex. So our square pyramid looks something like this where we know each of these distances is L. So now, if we imagine putting the vertex of that pyramid right here, and then doing a two-dimensional projection into the plane, we know that out here at the point H, we're going to be at the base, and the square base has height, has length L. Well, if the base goes from here to here, then this distance has to be L over 2, and this distance has to be L over 2. So then our curve would look something like this, and something like this. So then if that's L over 2 and H, that gives us the ordered pair H and L over 2. 
So we can then find the slope of that line as L over 2 minus 0 all over H minus 0, which gives us L over 2 divided by H over 1, and we multiply by the reciprocal, and we get L over 2H. So this distance right here, the equation of our line is y equals L over 2H times X. So that makes this height L over 2H X for each of these. So then the entire distance for every single one of those is going to be double that amount. So the side length of each slice is going to be double L over 2H X, so we're going to get L over H times X. So imagine now we have this little slice, and we're going to find the volumes of each of these pieces. We know they're delta X, and we know this distance, as we just found, is L over H times x. So then to find the volume of this pyramid, its volume is going to be the integral from 0 to h of L over hx squared, so that's the area of the squares, that's side times side, times its thickness, dx. So we have the integral from 0 to h of L squared over h squared times x squared dx. So our antiderivative is L squared over h squared times x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to h. We have our L squared over h squared. I'll put my 3 out here. L squared over 3H squared, and then it's going to be H cubed minus 0 cubed. So then we get L times H over 3, or L squared times, it, times H over 3, or written in the standard form, 1 third L squared H, where note that that's the area of the base, which is the formula for the volume of any cone in a pyramid is a cone with a square base. So one-third L squared H.